Right. If you've ever wondered how yoga create helps you create your best life ever, the next 15 minutes is going to reveal the top five reasons that yoga helps you really live a really fabulous life. <laughs> Who knew? I bet you did anyway. <laughs> Hi, I'm Audrey and this is Yoga to Transform. And I'm Christina. Thanks for joining us today. So, should we run through the top, top five, five things? things. Yes, top exactly. five things. All right. <laughs> so, let's start. Most people think about yoga to do with your body. Don't they just? Yeah, because most of people, like the pictures you see on Instagram, the things that when people talk about yoga, it's about, I can't touch my toes. So, it's yeah. all about... Uh, our bodies. Asana. Doing, That's right. Doing the physical practice and the poses of yoga. And you know what? That's pretty awesome. And it does bring with it a lot of amazing benefits. Yeah. So that's tip number one. You should you use yoga and do yoga for your body. Absolutely. It is a really good exercise that completely uses all your muscles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you're bending, you're stretching, you're improving your flexibility, you're improving your stability mm -hmm. and your balance. Mm -hmm. So it is a really good practice. But then that's the thing, isn't it? It's a practice. Absolutely. So if you want to have a, your best life ever, which involves having a body that's mobile and vital and flexible and strong as you age, because I guess that's the thing that when it really counts, um, then you have to have a regular practice of the physical asana, the physical poses of yoga to gain the benefits. That's right. And um, different classes of poses have different benefits. So standing poses help you become um, more grounded and earthy and strong in the legs and stable and support with, with balance. That's right. Yeah. So you, then you're going to have the ones that you're lying down with, and mm -hmm. so you've got the opportunity to do some twisting and again some stretching, but you're going to be able to use um, the benefit of the floor and the ground underneath you. Absolutely. You know what, actually, so the twisting, twists are really good for massaging your internal organs. So the internal organs help with your vitality and your well-being, and... Um, we need them to be as functioning as well as they can be. So that's also some of the seated poses on the floor, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so making sure that you get a good twist in, um, so that you are rinsing and wringing those internal organs and taking out the stuff that's not needed anymore and bringing in a fresh, fresh lush of blood. And then other poses like back bends. Um, help with getting energy and um, moving the blood around the body a lot faster. So there's a more than just getting strong and flexible um, and being able to get up and down off the floor easily as we age. And then of course there's those lovely um, restorative poses where you might be using the wall, like legs up the mm -hmm. wall, that's one mm -hmm. of my favourites. Mm -hmm. And that is really a great restorative pose that you really are supported completely by the floor, but you've got your legs above your... Yep. heart above the head because they're up the wall yep. and so you've got the opportunity for while you're resting mm. the fluids of your body get a chance to just come and resettle back into your torso absolutely so inversions so you could do the legs up the wall which is a great inversion or oh, there's actually just doing a handstand which is oh yeah uh, no, exactly. pop up into one of those <laughs> exactly <laughs> so your body and the, here's the thing like the mobility of your spine and the flexibility of your spine um says a lot about how you age and um, um, how how you kind of move through life as you get older. So with yoga, um, your spine is kept subtle, supple and flexible and, and strong as well. So uh, there's definitely a lot of um, benefits. The first benefit, definitely having your best life ever, particularly as you age, is having the physical aspects of yoga. Absolutely. Right. So let's get into something else. Tip number two. Uh, I didn't check the list, but I'm pretty sure tip number two is about your breath. Absolutely is. Because, yes. you know, there's so many things that your body needs um, as a result of your breath. You're taking in that oxygen, adding it into your bloodstream, then your heart's pumping it around your body. So taking full deep breaths. Yes, absolutely. Um, is such an important thing. Absolutely. It's yeah. supporting your uh, 
supporting your physical shape so you've mm -hmm. actually got an opportunity to open up your chest you've got your shoulders um, in the right position on your back shoulder blades in the right position you've got the diaphragm working so you're actually giving those those internal organs a bit of a massage every time you inhale mm -hmm. so being able to breathe well uh, is something that you can find in a great yoga practice Absolutely. Well, one of the first things that we teach when you come to a beginner's class is actually to align your movement with the breath and to inhale fully and exhale fully um, and to feel where you're breathing in the body. So noticing whether you're a belly breather, or a lower rib breather, or an upper rib breather, or, or all of those kinds of breaths. Because you notice a baby takes a full breath and the belly and the chest, everything lifts up. But uh, humans, our breath is, uh, as adults, sorry, our breathing restricts. And the other thing is that there's some research that says we only use 10% of our lung capacity. So there's a huge potential for you to take a deeper, deeper breath. And In fact, why don't you take the deepest breath that you have taken all day? Do it right now. Why not? Let's do that. Oh, and release when you're ready. Oh, great, everybody. Now, and you know that... Go on, what were you going to say? Inhaling through your nose. Yep. Um, so we've done a Thankful Thursday on breathing, the book by James Nestor, Breathe. We did a review of that book. And uh, there's a, so much research about the benefits of breathing through your nose versus breathing through your mouth. And yoga teaches you to breathe through your nose. And you sleep better, you lose weight, you can uh, have more energy when you're exercising. There's a whole lot of um, great benefits Great benefits from just shifting your breathing from inhaling from your mouth through to your nose. And I was just going to say that through having a deeper breath, which you activate right down into your belly, mm. you're also sending hormones to your brain that say that you're safe and secure Absolutely. and it can reduce your stress level. Mm. So those deep breaths that you take each day is, are sending signals to your brain saying, oh, don't worry, you don't need to be in fight or flight. You're safe. You're okay. Let's just relax. So it's a great way to relax as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, yeah, if you're working in a stressful environment, just take a deep breath. A few deep breaths just helps you ground into what's really happening and feel safe and secure. Absolutely. So then um, the deep breathing um, brings us on to mindfulness. Which is tip number three. Wonderful. So we're up to tip number three, which is yoga encourages mindfulness. Now, isn't that um, a buzzword at the moment, mindfulness? That's right. That's <laughs> right. And even we've just even talked about a couple of things that when we start doing our physical practice, we're beginning to align our movements to our breath. Yes, we are. And so what that is a form of mindfulness mm -hmm. because we're actually saying, right, well, when we do, oh, cow and cat comes to mind. So that's yeah. that hands and knees one, you know, when you're allowing your belly to release towards the floor and then arching the, the upper ribs um, up as you look down. And so if you're aligning your breath to your movement, already you're making your brain say, right, I need to think about this. Mm -hmm. And this only, so I'm breathing in and breathing out. Yeah. And it's giving you a chance to be mindful, just even straight away on the mat. No fancy apps or programs or anything, but simply aligning your breath to your movement. Absolutely. And the thing about yoga, right, is the mindfulness that it encourages. Um, when we are in a yoga pose, they're often quite difficult. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard to be anywhere else. Um, but then there's the other limbs of yoga, like the pranayama, which also, when you're focused on how you're breathing, your mind can't go anywhere else. Mm. Or meditation, where you're teaching your brain and to come inwards and draw your attention inside versus outside. So mindfulness is really a practice of being present in the moment with the activity that you're undertaking. And when you're practicing yoga, that's what you're practicing. That's right. And who, you know, hopefully you've been to a class or maybe even done classes with us and you've thought, oh my goodness, we're almost finished already and it's been a 45 minute class or a 50 minute class or something. Mm -hmm. And that's just gone so quickly because you've been present in the moment of doing the, the asana, the outside mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the forms that you're making your body or the shapes you're making your body go into. And because you've been concentrating on that, yep. you haven't had a chance to think about the shopping list or the groceries or what you should be doing at work or a car needs an oil change or whatever else might be on your list when you're outside or off the yoga mat. Absolutely. And the beautiful thing about um, a really good teacher is that they'll encourage you to take the practice off the mat. And they'll, they'll give you tips like, you know, uh, when you are doing the dishes, just think about doing the dishes. Don't think about what's going to happen after the dishes. Don't think about what's going to happen before the, what happened before the dishes. Just think about the dishes or the gardening or the weeding, whatever it might be. Just yep. making the bed, whatever it is. The mindfulness is... <laughs> bringing yourself. You don't have to do the noise. Yeah, yeah. I always make sound effects. I'm like, ooh, I'm the, I'm the, like, it makes life way more fun when there's a, <laughs> so yeah, but right. just zoning in, into, you're bringing yourself into the zone of the present moment. Well, I think that really leads into mm. our fourth tip. Absolutely. Because we're talking about uh, bringing our attention into what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Focus on the effort not the outcome that's right so I know in my classes I say to uh, my students that I'd much rather them feel what it feels like on the inside and not worry so much about what it looks like on the outside absolutely absolutely so from a physical practice that's what it's all about is it's an inside out approach that's the mindfulness piece as well <laughs> that's right that's right and so it, we it, and so it's all about it, it, well, it's nothing about the outcome, really, of whether yeah. the pose looks like the Instagram whatever or the yes. photo that you've seen. Yeah. It's all about what is actually happening in the moment. Yeah, and what's optimal for you. And so um, in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, which is one of the, the, the famous yoga texts that we're all asked to study when we become teachers, um, Krishna says to Arjuna, um, focus on the action, not the fruit of the action. So let go of the fruit of the action. Because... What we're really being taught here is let go of your attachment to the outcome. So if I do X, Y will happen. Well, you don't know if Y will happen. Could be Z or A. <laughs> and, and it could be far better or it could be far worse or it could be who knows, right? But, but what so much of our suffering comes from, the fact that I expect an outcome from my effort. And uh, the practice is more about just doing the effort for the sheer delight of doing the effort and doing the best that you can and letting go of, of what you might get from that because you don't know. Yeah, that's right. And so um, when you're invited to use a, a blanket or a strap or a block or use something in your household mm. that you can use to help you or support you do your yoga practice mm. grab hold of it if it's something that it feels good to do because we're not trying to wobble our way into an accident or something no. or strain ourselves because we're trying to get down when we should really still be having holding onto a chair so you're making it make sense for you and your body absolutely absolutely and you're making it make sense the next action is the right action for you Right? And if you just focus on, I'm going to be present fully in taking this action and let go of the outcome, then you'll find that the joy is in the journey, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Which is a yo really very yogic, isn't it? The Absolutely. joy is in the journey. Yes, yes. So, um, and it's funny because uh, I remember someone kind of, you know, we're you learn how to be in the moment and you learn how to find the joy in the journey and then I remember um, hearing someone say once well I didn't get the outcome that I wanted so I you know it wasn't really worth it and I was like yeah but did you feel better in the process of just being well yeah well I think that that's a pretty good outcome yeah. <laughs> you were feeling better feel better live your life well feel exactly. better yeah and so how are you going to live your best life ever just enjoy it Enjoy, focus on doing the best that you can and let go of any expectations. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So where are we up to? Must Number be up to five. five. Right. So the, the thing that I love the most about this, this one is that um, it's really hard to get your head around, but once you get your head around it, it's so freeing. You are perfect exactly as you are. Number five. That is what yoga teaches you. You are perfect exactly where you are and exactly as you are. That's right. So yeah. the 
the or it just comes back to all those things we we're just talking about. The struggle of the end point of the journey is yes. not worth it. It's not nothing to do with it actually because you your activity right here and now is just perfect for what you need to do. So you watching us mm-hmm. and us talking to you is just what we need to be doing right now and we're it's perfect. Absolutely. And how do you know that it was meant to be happening? Because it happened. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I think um, in modern society, we've, we've made um, an industry out of uh, finding our flaws, needing to be fixed, and focusing on what's wrong with us. Um, and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a trained psychotherapist. Like, lots of people make a lot of money out of that stuff. And... Heck, there's not a lot of focus in psychological studies around what's good about the person because we're trying to fix all the things that are wrong. Um, And yoga just gives a complete flip of perspective and it says, well, you're already perfect. Don't make your humanity, don't make your humanness wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and I think one way that you can really focus in on that is if you've got a gratitude practice. Correct. Because yeah. the idea in society in general often is, you know, we'll look at what's wrong and we'll fix it. Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, you know, actually I can find 10 things that were right and I'll be grateful for them. And in fact, the more I look into my life to find the things that I'm grateful for, the more I find. Mm. Hey, that's funny, isn't it? What you look for, you find. Absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, th- and I think like that learning to embrace um, the perfection of your own being and knowing that um, all the stories of your past, all the stories that are yet to be made, all the mistakes that you've made, all of the... Mistakes you're going to make. <laughs> exactly. Like, um, that's just perfect, right? And nothing about any of that needs to be changed or needs to be shamed or needs to be judged. It just needs to be loved and embraced and... Uh, the practice of gratitude you start seeing what's working because when you're looking at what's not working there's you an see en- that there's an energy that comes with it too like that's life's right. not so much fun right <laughs> yeah that's right whereas when you're looking for good things hmm. they turn up as well because you notice you're noticing them but then they also turn up and you know what the balance of life which is let's just put in a bonus tip right oh, i bonus, love bonus tips why life? must be up to six yeah we are so the <laughs> bonus thing is that particularly in the yoga that Audrey and I practice and teach is that the ground of being is innately good and beautiful right yeah yeah so um when you start training your mind to see that the beauty and the goodness that surrounds you then um your whole like life does become way better that's right because you're noticing you're feeling into it and you're actually, you know, it's influencing the actions you're taking as well. Mm-hmm. So you are, you are beginning to live a more um, joyous, grateful life because those are the things you're noticing and that's how you're living your life. Absolutely. And then you know what? If you practice yoga enough and you get on the, on the yoga mat at least three times a week and you focus on breathing deeply and being present and focusing on your effort, not your outcome, and looking for the good, looking for the good, and embracing yourself exactly as you are, Definitely. you're going to live your best life ever. <laughs> hey, and who doesn't want to do that? Exactly. <laughs> yes, to living your best life ever. <laughs> yes, to it, babe. Woohoo. So, go out and do it. Absolutely. Tell us about it. Yeah, and we have um, an online yoga studio, so if you want to start jumping in to get some of these practices underway, join the studio two weeks for free and um, tell us how your life is starting to get better with every practice. That's right. Yeah. And if you like, if you um, subscribe, like and share, you'll also find that once you've subscribed, there's a whole bunch of other um, practices and also chats that we do uh, with you, for you, that will help uh, you find those um joyous moments in your life as you're doing yoga absolutely because we're all about helping you shift those limiting patterns in your life so that you can live your best life ever thanks for joining us thank you namaste namaste